Welcome to release day for Purpresenter 7.10. Hi, I'm Nathan, and I'm excited to share with you these new features. So first, we're gonna start with the playlist templates. Everyone who uses ProPresenter is hopefully using Playlists Weekly to organize your service in ProPresenter. That way your operator can click to the next item or use the continuous playlist feature which lets you scroll from songs to scriptures to videos, everything in your playlist without clicking anywhere. If you aren't using Planning Center like I do to auto set up your playlist, then the person setting up your playlist each week is going to love this new feature, Playlist Templates. Yes, Playlist Templates. You can now save your playlist as a template which can be recalled as easily as making a new playlist. Right click your playlist you wanna save as your template, select Save as Playlist Template, name it, and then to recall it, select plus new playlist from template, select the template you named, and boom, how cool is this? Playback markers. That last one was really neat, but this next one is like, whoa! So there is a new media inspector in Pro 7.10, which can be found by right-clicking on any video or music file. There's a new tab where you can add markers to any area of a video clip. Markers are used to identify any point of a video or points in an audio track, such as verse, chorus, bridge of a song. In the main Pro 7 interface, under the output window, there is a markers tab, which can be clicked on any time a media file is playing. Here you can add new markers, as well as navigate to any pre-marked part of a video or audio file. In the stage display editor, we can link the playback marker for our clip to select the first, last, next, or previous markers on the active clip. Let's open the inspector for this video clip by clicking marker, then edit markers. I can scrub through the video and I can add markers at all of the most interesting points of the video. Here I'm uh, marking points of the SpaceX Starship SN15 test flight. Once these markers are in place, I can name them, change the color. Uh, this move to playhead button means that if I drag my playhead somewhere and then I click this button, it'll move the selected marker to that location. The coolest thing about these markers is that I can add actions to each of these markers. Then while the video is playing, it will cue the actions whenever the video or audio file gets to the desired marker. Adding cues is one use case, but we can also utilize the markers on our stage display screens. Once I open the stage editor, I can add the new playback marker, looping at the options in the link text section. We can now select playback marker, then we have options for destination, which is either presentation, videos, uh, announcements, I'm guessing this means the announcement layer, and then audio. Next, we can select which cue we want to count down to. First, previous, next, last, or even specific by the marker's name. Use marker color. This will allow us to either use the marker color we defined in the inspector or use our selected text color. Last, we can choose how the markers are displayed, either time to marker or marker name. This is great because I can either show that launch is the next marker or show the time to the next marker, which is the time to launch. But you could also use both, which will allow you to display on the stage screen the marker name and the time to that marker. Reimagined timelines. New to Pro 7.10, we can now have an additional media and automation track in the timeline. In previous versions of Pro 7, the timeline feature only had the ability to add slides and an audio track. Actions and backgrounds were limited to slides, so to add an action or background, you had to use an existing slide or create a new one. Now we can add actions and background media independently of slide locations directly in the timeline. There is a video I created to look at how we can play back multi-tracks for worship from within Pro 7 and automate these slide triggers without needing additional software such as Ableton Live or Multitrack's playback app. Timecode is now supported in Pro 7.10 to control playback of slides, backgrounds, actions, and audio files. All that gets set up in the timeline of each presentation item. Then timecode can be activated for that timeline and the time set to whatever Pro 7 is listening for. I'll keep the default time, which is set for zero in this case. Other timecode settings can be found in View, Timecode. Here we can select the audio interface we're gonna be receiving the timecode audio from. When a playlist is selected, we can also see a complete list of the timecode cues available. 
This is the exact moment. If you don't know how time code works, you're very confused. So to answer your questions, I created a video that explains exactly what time code is and how you can use it for free to keep your cues in sync. Click on that video to watch it next. Those are the updates for ProPresenter 7.10. Please subscribe to my channel for more content. I'm Nathan, and thanks so much for joining me as I help teams and individuals do church and event production with excellence.